Now, some time back we made a video on uh, creating an issue using a script enough for Jira on cloud. And if you remember that video, in that particular video we used a script to, of course, uh, do a very simple thing like uh, when you have to create a create an issue, you have to specify the issue type ID and the project ID. And in case you want to create a subtask, you have to specify the parent as well. Now, what I want to do today, I want to, of course, spend some time uh, expanding this example. And uh, what I want to do is basically show you, like when you create uh, a new issue, uh, how to make sure that the issue ID is correct. Now, this issue ID is something that you can always go and take a look at. Uh, I mean, you can always go to the issue type section, issue type list. And when you hover your mouse over edit, you can find the issue type ID. But let us use uh, REST API to fetch this. So let me first copy the script if I can. And uh, now in this particular uh, script, let us first run the script to make sure that the script is still working and we have uh, everything correct. So it says uh, created with the key of CTS-34. So the issue uh, has been created and it means that the issue type ID is correct, like which is in this case 1001. Uh, so let us focus on this issue type, issue type ID. Now when you are writing a script, you have to ensure that the ID is correct or basically you are using the correct ID and in this video let us focus on fetching the issue types and their IDs. Now for fetching the issue type IDs I will uh, use um, use one uh, endpoint which is let us say I think it is uh, I think it is a rest slash API slash issue type or issue or issue types. So I think this is the uh, the correct endpoint if I remember correctly. Let us see. Let, let us see. And uh, I will probably create a variable to basically I'll declare uh, I'll declare a variable to hold this response. So this will be our uh, issue type response. And I think we'll get issue types. So we will now do something like as object. And uh, let us see if it works. So I'll return the return. Uh, I'll, I'll issue I'll, I'll issue a return statement here before I proceed further. And uh, hopefully it will uh, give us something. So I'll run it and uh, let us see the response. So we do have uh, you know some response here and I think uh, we need to basically focus on uh, the body. So the, so this is right now empty so I'm not sure why. Let us try something like uh, a list and uh, run it one more time. Okay so now we have something here and uh, so if you notice here we have the body and we, if you look at the body, we have basically the subtask and uh, if it is true, then it means it is a subtask. If it is false, then it means it is uh, a normal issue type. Now, of course, we have the ID here and uh, this is what you need. And uh, this is what you need to check for that the ID that you are using should be correct. Now, the good thing is that you can find whether the issue type is subtask or uh, a normal issue type. Now, if you have to figure out whether this particular issue type is a normal issue type not a not a subtask you can do further filtering here so if you have to focus on let us say the body so so what i want to do now i want to get the list i, I want to basically get a list of all these uh, issue types and i will probably create a variable here um let us see what we can do here something like this I'm creating a map because uh, this is a list of uh, it's not a not a simple list of uh, variables uh, basically a list of of, of a map and uh, I'll declare a variable here issue types 
and uh, let us return this. Let us see the the, the output here. So if we now run this, uh, hopefully we'll get something like this, and uh, we are now getting closer to what we have to do. Now we have a list here, and I think we do have uh, some issue types here in the list, and those issue types are not standard issue types, but subtask. So if I do something like this, true. So we do have something like uh, uh, I think few of them, like four, I believe. So one is uh, subtask subtest execution the other one is uh, test case the next one is subtask and uh, test campaign so let us just uh, let us get rid of it and uh, i will go back to the to the code above and what i have what, what i can do uh, we, now we have a list we can do something like uh, dot find and uh, if you want to further filter based on the type you can do something like uh, i think the uh, subtask is what we need to check so if it is uh, if you do something like uh, this true it will then uh, filter the list for you and it will only show you the standard issue types so if you now search again so oh uh, no so basically it, it will show you only the subtask but it is only giving us one not 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 really uh, um not really all of them so maybe i can do so first i need to first negate this so i can do something like this false and if i run this again so it should give me all these all these standard issue types but it is giving me right now just one so the problem i believe is that uh, we are using here find and uh, what we should be doing is using find all so we can do something like this find all and uh, if we if we now run this we will get uh, all the all the standard issue types so we can search for true and there is no true here and by the way we don't have to do like uh, e double equal to false we can also negate the whole thing like uh, not equal to it dot subtask since it is uh, a boolean it will uh, and it should work run this and uh, the result should be same so we now have the list of all the subtasks and if you notice here we also have a we also have this id subtask id and uh, that, that of course you can validate now let us say if you have to figure out or if you have to uh, focus on just one issue type so let us say you're creating an issue in uh, one of the project and you know that the only issue type that you have or the issue type which is applicable is task so what you can do you can uh, do further further filtering here like uh, and it dot name is it name so i guess yeah name so if you do something like this you will get uh, only one issue type or two okay so we are now getting a task and we are also getting a, i think uh, okay so it's probably the same thing but uh, i think uh, what is happening here is the uh, it is basically the uh, translated uh, version of the same issue type id so l let us take a look at the situation right now if you go to the to the uh, list of issue types and if you look at uh, the list here let me reduce the size it's a bit too big so what we were looking for is a task and uh, we have a task subtask so we do have just one uh, called task and I believe uh, if you click on the uh, translate, it will uh, give you hopefully some translation. So, th so we do have, uh, I think for this particular case, uh, for this particular issue type, uh, uh, because it was uh, showing us uh, one translation, I'm not sure about the language. Let us take a look at, uh, I will probably go back to the output and take a look at the output here. 
so it says untranslated name is uh, task and uh, the name is task and uh, the, the avatar id is uh, 10318 so and project id is uh, and project id is equal to 10038 let me let me search for something else let me search for uh, may, maybe an improvement let us see the output let us see what we have here so if we click click on the run so it is giving us just one one uh, issue type but for task it was giving us two but i think uh, that was the translated version i'm i'm just checking uh, very quickly so if i maybe take a look at the uk version of uh, task no nothing here let me let me just for the uk version let me just uh, add task in uk task uk description and uh, update and i will go back to let us say united states oh no okay view okay i think uh, now we should have I, i think for task three results but the issue type is same but you need to be aware of the issue type so this is something that uh, um, not really not really i think this is something a bit weird here and uh, i need to understand how it works i will uh, take a look at the examples and i will uh, check why we do have why we have two issue types instead of uh, just one so let us go back to the list of issue types and uh, untranslated name is task and it says scope which is uh, okay so the issue type id is 10071 do we have is it possible to have uh, let me first uh, take a look at the list again so we have task and uh, improvement so okay so in our case we have uh, two issue types with the same name and they have uh, different issue type ids i think ah uh, okay i think oh so i i think i was getting a bit confused so this particular issue type is uh, probably from the next gen project i think now i know the picture uh, the real picture so if i go to the view all projects i was getting confused with the translation apologies so i will take a look at uh, do we have uh, i think we just have one issue type next gen epics i will probably reduce the size it's a bit big but i think yeah, that is how we learn that is how we we learn how things work and that is why i, I was getting a bit surprised with this uh, scoping here like what is the scope thing like project so i that, that is what it is it is basically the scope for uh, the next gen project because next when you talk about next next gen projects everything is project specific now if you look at the issue type here i believe uh, this will uh, yeah so we do have task here now if i create maybe one more uh, project uh, let us say new next gen project i will change the template to maybe software i believe let us click on the software scrum and uh, create i will create the same issue type issue type with the same name task i was looking in a totally different uh, location i was checking the translation but uh, that is not the case i was wrong so uh, let us take a look at the project settings and uh, we will create a new issue type called task it might be already there let us see if i click on yeah we do have one task here now this particular issue type is uh, something part of a different project now let us see if we run this so we are looking for an issue type with task in the name and only task if i look now i still have uh, 
I still have the same list here. So it says uh, a small distinct piece of work and uh, the project type, the type is equal to project and the ID is equal to 10038. Okay, so I think it won't really repeat itself. Um, the project, if I look at the project, uh, how do we check the project ID of an next gen project? Let us, let us figure out. Okay, if I hover my mouse on top of the details, it is showing us 10040. Okay, so what I'll do, I will go to the, where should we go? Did I create a project of right type? No, I was uh, totally wrong. I did, actually didn't create a next gen project. I created a classic project. I am I'm making mistakes today. So let us create a project again and uh, change the template and uh, try a next gen project. This is what I should have been doing. I was doing something um, totally weird. Next gen. It's okay. We all make mistakes as long as we can correct them and we are aware of those mistakes, it is okay. So uh, now we have a proper next gen project. And what I want to do now, I want to create a new issue type. So let us go to the project settings. And uh, let us let, maybe we already have let, let us see what we have in this particular project. So issue types. And uh, we do have a task here, which is a good news. Now, if I go to the console, will I get three issue types? I guess so. I hope so. So if I run this, and now we have three issue types. Yes, that is what I was looking for. So the first one is definitely standard, normal, classic, Jira, software-based issue type. The next one is for our next-gen project. And so is this one. And uh, and that is it, I think. Uh, so this project, particular project ID is the 10041. And uh, if I maybe go back to the project settings and hover map, I want to find the project ID of next in project. I'm sure we can do it using REST API, but let me go to the projects. Uh, it should be 10041, just to validate, just to, uh, I, I, I just want to make sure it is 100% correct. So next gen project. Let us find the next gen project. This one, yep. And uh, if I hover my mouse on this, ah, I really want to know the project ID. Come on. So th it's a bit difficult in this particular case. Maybe, maybe if I do this, move to trash. No. So there is no. Usually, if you hover your mouse over the over the edit buttons, edit links, you can see somewhere in the URL the project ID, which is fine. I, th I think uh, I think this is correct. Uh, so, if you let us say take a look at the project ID here, and if you copy it, l I'm not sure if I'm doing something right or wrong. It will not work. It will not work. No. Uh, anyways, I, I think. Uh, this is correct. So if you look at the task here, uh, what I can also do, I can uh, maybe create my own issue type, like uh, gen issue type, I will copy the maybe I'll just write next gen issue type. And uh, I will create this in my project in my next gen project. And if I go back to my script, if I change it here, of course, it will uh, return us. And uh, I was I'm basically looking for the project ID. So yes, this is definitely in the project on my next end project. So basically, today, I wanted to just experiment a bit with uh, the rest API. The good thing is that with the with the uh, next gen projects, and uh, the issue types, we now have, I mean, when you're working with rest API, it will show you the items from uh, next gen projects. I'm not yet sh yet hundred percent sure like about the availability of these endpoints, how well they cover the uh, next gen projects. But I think uh, um, by looking at the documentation and of course by playing today, I think uh, it is still uh, work in progress. And uh, you can still do a few things. 
I, I'm not sure. I don't really have like a com comparison of uh, what all you can do with the REST API for classic projects or normal projects, but I think you can do quite a lot. So I hope you enjoyed watching today's video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.